getting these um, two carbs choke cold start mechanisms uh, fixed. And I think the best way to start this is to prove that they're on the wrong way around. Now, here I have a brand spanking new, never been used, bargain CD2 175 Stromberg carburetor. Never ever been used, never refurbished, brand spanking new. And on the side here, well, we'll notice a couple of observations. First and foremost, we'll be able to confirm which way up the choke module sits. I would also confirm that from the factory, they never put gaskets behind this face. And I know there's a gasket included in the kit, but it doesn't mean you've got to use it, does it? Hey, no, no, it doesn't, no. Now, interestingly, this one has got a screw-in plug on the bottom here, which does look a bit mangled, doesn't it? Makes me wonder. Um, so, I'm guessing that this would have been the last of the carburetors, bodies, that was set up to um, basically be tuned up through the, you know, through the jet rather than through the meter needle. Um, and I'm expecting that the top end will be adjusted by the meter needle. There you go. Anyway, we're not talking about this car, we're talking about this choke module. So if I undo the second of these two screws, <clears throat> no gasket. But secondly, and more importantly, we get a feeling of which one of these is the right way round. That one's the right way round. That one's wrong. So what I need to do here is undo that nut, rotate the disc 180 degrees, put the nut back on again. And I think we'll be there. What do you reckon? Might work then. Okay, so now we've established it's this one that's wrong. Oh yes. Um, what I next need is my sockets. Seven sixteenths, I guess, or eleven mil. No, <laughs> it's not. It doesn't look half inch, though, does it? Too big for half inch. Maybe it's seven sixteenths. Maybe my. Ah, seven sixteenths. Just didn't like my eleven mil socket. Um, interestingly, this is loose. This never bodes well, does it? Now the nuts can stay there. Then we've got a lock washer. Then we've got the arm. Then underneath we've got some paint and paper. We've got a cam. And underneath the cam, we will have the disc. Now there's the cam. Disc pops out. And there's the disc. Okay. So we need to rotate because basically the disc can go in either that way or that way because it's got should have had a d on it rather than uh whatever so it can go that way round and then we'll put the spring back on spring goes like that now that needs to rotate around and around until it's actually on to the bump stop which is there that's looking good spring just needs to go down a bit there we are it's definitely good now and we'll put that back on and we'll put the lock washer back on and we'll put the nut back on which is still inside the wrench and then I can pop these two back onto the carburetors now we've got two chokes working and the two things that I look for, well, sorry, three things I look for, four things including that the right way fucking round. Make sure that the disc pushes up neatly inside. Make sure the disc is smooth. I've seen one of these that's got a big dimple on it, machining fault. Holes are clear. And that the spring works. It's probably five. I will put these back on. Putting these um, choke cold start modules back onto the carbs is actually dead straightforward um, but just make sure you get the right module on the right carb so here I've got the right hand carb can you see 
I don't know. Right hand carb, left hand carb. Left hand carb is the one that's got the big sweep on it. It's the one that goes here and has the kind of the, the, the cold um, uh, or the cold start idle speed adjustment. So that goes on there. Just make sure this face is clean. Make sure this face is clean. There's a fair amount of gloop on here. It's remnants, I think, of some gasket sealant, I think. Uh, where are we? There's a blade there. So I'll do that without chopping my finger off. Yeah, just some old gasket sealant by lots of things. But really, you want a, a machined surface. So it needs to be machine to machine. The metal to metal. That looks all right, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Kettle's just boiling up for my afternoon mug of coffee. What should I say? My third afternoon mug of coffee. Fucking hell, Richard. What is going on with you today? Um... Yeah, I'm struggling to get that shit off there. I don't know what it is. Let me get a, a wipe there. Look at that. There it goes. Right. Now, you could put a bit of Hylamar around here. Don't generally find it needed. But there's still lumps of this stuff on here. It's balling up. And if it's balling up, um, it might compress or it might not. But if you're going to get air coming in here... It's not going to help it. So let me clean this up properly. Right, clean that one up. Um, so each of the screws that hold these down, it's a recessed screw, whatever, the countersunk screw with a countersunk washer. That just needs to sit into the threaded hole fairly easy. So this particular fault was, if we cut through the faults we had with these carburetors, I don't think the diaphragms were particularly good. Um, the throttle butterflies were certainly not very good. The float heights were both set incorrectly. Uh, the jets were set incorrectly, uh, such that it was very difficult, I guess, to be able to tune the carburetors. And the choke modules were incorrect. One was incorrect, so it was... Uh, bit of a catalogue of disasters really but let's hope now that these go back together and behave now I'll just do these up so they're just tight enough as I say there should be a nice machined face in there checking that the spring on the choke module returns the choke back which it does beautifully okay Ooh, might be a bit sticky there's a wire sticking in my arm here somewhere right let's open that up no it's okay I think I might take this one apart actually having put it on there take it apart just double check because that is quite I mean it is flicking off but if I pull it off slowly doesn't quite fully close up to the gap. It will do with a little bit of finger pressure, but it shouldn't need that. Let's try the other one. So the other one goes on. Right hand carburetor. This is on the reverse face. So this is on the bulkhead side of the carb. Uh, nice and clean already. Uh, it goes on that way up. And that seats in there. There's one screw goes in. Find the other screw which is there. And then that then leaves me the only thing I really need to do. Well there's two things I need to do actually. Oh there was another fault with these. There was like as I say there was an extra spring on the um on the throttle mechanism. And um, we couldn't work out what it was for. Now there's a space of missing at the top end here. I'll show you what I mean, it's on the pedestal and the space was missing and because of that the shaft for now, was bent um, and I think that might have been because, because the shaft was bent I think that the whole thing was kind of messed up 
me just do these up, just check this choke, flicks open and closed. That's how I'd expect it to be. Now I've had this one apart, as you remember, because of the other side. The spacer I'm talking about actually sits here, there's a bolt that goes through there, and into the side of the right hand carb, um, and that was closed up completely. So you can imagine that the whole pedestal bolted down here was twisted. And I think that's possibly why the uh, why the mechanism was uh, running a bit on the tight side. Now let's have a quick look at this choke here. But I'll see if I can, um, well I will, just take it apart. 7 sixteenths. So it comes off in the end. That lot washer for spacer there. <coughs> Goodness, spacer there. It's all a bit grubby. Nice anodized plate. What I'll do is I'll just knock the uh, spring off the back of it. Spring doesn't seem very tight actually. I'm wondering if the uh, spring's incorrect. This should come off here quite easily and it's not. Here it comes. Nice, this is that chappy. Then we got the spring. Quite grubby. That seems a bit on the stiff side to me, so I'm going to take it off. Again. So I'd rather be sure that these things are working than just lob them together. And then the next thing I need to do is I want to go and sort the temperature compensators out. And then these can go back onto the car next week. Um, and I can set them up. Uh, because it's a 1972 car, strictly speaking, I wouldn't use a, um, a CO meter um, because you can actually set them up nicely. Now, that's actually quite tight in there. So there's shite in the bush <laughs> for now. Right, so let me clean this all out. There's just all grub and detritus in there. Having just pulled it out and pushed it back in again, it's working. So I just think that there was something interfering in here, in this bush here, and that. Now it's all out. There's nothing else in there. It's all looking fine. I can go back. <laughs> Need to look at the photograph to remember which way up it went. It's not a problem looking at photographs, just to remind yourself which way up it went. I'm fairly sure I'd be able to work it out. So then take a photograph. Right, so basically the carburetor takes it that way up and that way up, if I remember rightly. So as that rotates, the holes go over here. What I am going to do is I'm going to give this a damn good clean actually because it is, it is grubby. So let me come back to you once I've given this a good clean. It's just a lot of shit on this together again give it a quick clean over um, <clears throat> and right this side I'll do it right so that can go down there la, la, la. that can go in Duh. And then we got the spring, which is there. Spring goes up against that post, and then we adjust that around to go onto the dish as and when we need to. That goes onto there. Is that the right way round? Yes, that's the right way round, according to another one that I've just done. Spacer. Lock washer, nut, <laughs> 
tighten up. It's only a brass fixing, it need to be done up to 65 million foot pounds. Um, and then, well, that needs to go then right the way around. I want a long, thin screwdriver, really. This one will do. Oh, I can out the box. Right. And then I want this to go. Where's it hook onto? It hooks onto over here. Let's take that off there for a second. It can be easier doing it the other way around, I think. Let me hook this over there so now I have got no, I think we're making a mess of this Richard aren't we put that one there put this one I've got it upside down I think being an arse being an arse Got the spring on the shaft upside down. Sorry, folks. It's got to this end of the day, and I'm still struggling with bloody carburetors. Right now, is it that way around? I think it might be. Yes, that's the right way around. So basically that goes on there, I believe. That goes there. That goes like that. Picture tells me that I'm the right way around. Then we put the spacer on. Spring was upside down. Sorry about that, folks. And then the star washer. If there's a reason why it won't work the way you're anticipating, then take a step back and have a look. Um, you'll nearly always find out exactly why it's not behaving the way you expect it to. That's on. Then we go under here, and we get the spring, and we bring it around, and we drop it back up there. And we end up with a nice spring action <coughs> disc that is the same way round as the other one. Pop this back in place. That way up. Two screws, which are right here, with their nice cup spring washers. Totally incorrect screwdriver to do them up with. It works. Big screwdriver, zip, and zip. Is that better? No, it's still not better. It's not happy, is it? Why is it not happy? There's something odd going on here, isn't there? Let's take that off. Take that off. <laughs> Something not right. Right, it's coming off again. He's a crazy. It's something to do with that disc rotating against the uh, side of the carburetor body. And if that ain't going to work, then, like I say, investigate. Let's find out why. Haven't fisted Gibbon. Uh, right. 
It does look like it's picked something up here, doesn't it? There's something running around there. I can't see anything on here, so let's give it a damn good wipe down. And, yeah, I think there's just a bit of crap on there. It's almost like a bit of that old High Lamar blue sealant, the stuff that was balling up on me. Now, at this stage of assembly, I really don't want to be using steel wool on here to clean this face up with. I guess I could use a um, piece of paper. Not putting any weight on this, I'm just checking that it is flat. And it is. And it is. And the disc is rotating or pushing up that shaft neatly and is sprung loaded. Oh, I wonder what that is there. Is that a dimple? I've had this on a car, one of these carburetors before where the disc has a very, very, very slightly raised profile. I think in that case it's actually an indentation. It's a pit rather than a raised. Right, let's pop it back on again. <clears throat> Gasket wouldn't have fixed this, by the way. All you guys shouting at me saying, oh, you should put a gasket in there. Well, they didn't when they came out of the factory. Um, and I know they supply a gasket now, but I don't believe they ever had gaskets on them. Answers down below, please. And zip. And zip. Right, I've done it. That is exactly as I'd have expected, and just to prove to you that I'm not messing around here, that's all it was. The ball of that horrible fucking blue Hylomar shit was on the surface there. Right, now we've done that. That's good. Good carbs. Mm -hmm.